All right. Well, good morning to you, too. <laughs> hey, I think after 26 years, we'll start doing it that way. That was great. Well, good morning and welcome. So we're going to wrap up this series this morning, The Man Who Became Himself. Actually, I wrapped it up several weeks ago, but decided to just keep this, this framework. <laughs> uh, it's a nice generic title. So uh, how many of you did some work on your spiritual gifts or helped somebody else work on their spiritual gifts in the last few days, last week? Raise your hands if you did that. All right. So uh, why am I doing this if you guys aren't, aren't doing that? You know, so, okay, I get it. I get it. But the, 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 the power of the reminder, the power of the reminder of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus is why we come here. It's to, to re, refuel. It's to get our jets refired. And uh, so uh, this morning, we're going to talk about something that uh, pro- perhaps, I would say probably all of you have had some experience with, and that's looking at your place in, in the body of Christ. I mentioned a few weeks ago, I was going to give you a teaching on the body of Christ. And so that's what we're going to do today. The title of the message uh, is the, your place. And then first, let's talk about what is the body? What is the body of Christ? And we all know the answer. It's the, the church. It's us. But I want us to take a deeper dive into that. We're going to begin at 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to start at verse 12. So read along with me. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. So there is one body. So all Christians form this one body uh, in, in Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So there's one body, many parts. So we are all part of one body, and, and uh, although we have air between us, in the mind of Christ, it's as though there are ligaments and muscle tissue that are connecting us to each other, that, so that we really are part of each other. And the Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. And so when two or three, wherever you get together with, if you take one other Christian uh, to lunch or go to lunch with one other Christian, that is the, a representation of the body of Christ. If you're together with, with 30,000 screaming people in a stadium uh, at a Christian concert or something like that, that, again, is a, another iteration of the body of Christ. So wherever we are in community, that's, that's the body of Christ. All right, now we need to see a few things here. Verse 15. The first thing is, is that you cannot elect out of the body of Christ. You can't elect out. Verse 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. So I can't, if my hand doesn't want to be part of my body, uh, you know, I can't, I can't just walk around with my hand behind my back and pretend that it's not part of my, it, the hand is part of the body, whether, whether it wants to be or not. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, would, uh, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. So there are, uh, there are men, there, I'm thinking of one guy in particular, but there are many men who are believers, but they're hanging around the fringe of the church. And they're doing that because for whatever reason, they have low self-esteem, low self-esteem in general, low self-esteem in Christ. They don't really understand their place in Christ, that they are really part of the, the community. They are part. They don't think they are. They, they, they have basically, uh, the guy I'm thinking about, his father used to tell him consistently when he's growing up, you, you know, you're no good. You'll never amount to anything. And so the reason that he's hanging around on the fringe and he doesn't become part of the body is because he is afraid that if he gets close to people, they'll feel like his father did and then he'll be rejected. And so in order to avoid rejection, he doesn't become part of the body. That's one reason. All right. Uh, there are other reasons. 
I'm thinking of another man who is a floater, uh, who doesn't belong to any particular church, and he, he also is on the fringe. But the reason that he's on the fringe is he doesn't want to give up control. He wants to be in charge. See, he wants to be able to call the shots. He doesn't want to have any accountability for his, for his life, for the way he's living his life. And so he says, he says, I just don't want to feel tied down. I like my freedom. Well, yeah, he likes his freedom. But what he, what he really is doing is, is he's denying the teaching of Christ in the body. That's, that's what's going on there. All right, so that's one kind of situation, one kind of error about this body of Christ. It, the error is that, that you have the option to be part of it or not. You do not. Once you're in Christ, you're part of this community. Second thing is, is that there is a necessity for different parts. Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And so the, the, the teaching on spiritual gifts, which we did uh, last week, and which everybody is obviously very well aware of what your spiritual gifts are, since you didn't have to do the, the, the homework on it. And so I get that. I appreciate that. So, so you know that the reason God gives all these different gifts is so that the different parts of the body can do their different types of work. So not everybody's going to be a, a mouthpiece like me. Uh, some people are going to, well, you, you get it. You understand what I'm saying. So that's the second part of this. So this is a, uh, so the whole mindset here is that there's this 1 Corinthians 12, one body, many parts mindset, way of looking at things. And then the third thing to see here in this text is the necessity of each other. Beginning of verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be uh, weaker are indispensable, like the little toe. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. You can figure out what that one is. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. You can figure out which one that is. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined, you see that? He has combined the members of the body and given the greater honor to the parts that lack it so that there should be no division in the body. Now, another body of Christ here just to be thinking about over on the side is your family, if you have one, your immediate family or your extended family. Uh, in Christ, you are also a, com a combination, uh, a body of Christ. You are an iteration of the body of Christ. And so there should be no division in that body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And so there's an interesting phenomenon here. We'll talk about it a little bit more, maybe. But if, if you are the man, you are the head of that particular community. And so as a result, you are the one that has the responsibility. You're the one that has the duty to make sure that the body is not dysfunctional, that the body is working like it's supposed to in your family. So that there is uh, this, this joint effort. There is not this division. And then reading on. Now, that doesn't mean you can overcome. I mean, there's, everybody has their own mind. I mean, you can only do your part, right? But in terms of doing your part. And look at verse 26. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So in sticking with the family for a minute. So um, if you're suffering and you're the leader of the family, you know that uh, in order for you to be a whole person in, in this body of your family, you, you really need to get some sympathy and some encouragement coming back from you. So if you're not getting that, then what can you do about that? Well, you're the leader, so you can articulate it. You can have a conversation. You can talk about, hey, we're a family. We're, we're an iteration of the body of Christ. 
We, we need to figure out how we can be combined, how we can make sure there's no vision, how everybody gets an equal voice, and, and how when, 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 when one suffers, that we all suffer, and when one rejoices, we all rejoice. You can also do this in your community groups, your church, big church, small groups, here in your groups, and you, of course, do that all the time, right? All right, so... Verse 27 says, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And then it goes on, starts list, listening out some of the roles of, of giftedness. So, I, I am the body of Christ. You get that? Anybody have a problem with that? I am the body of Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am the body of Christ. Does anybody have a problem with that? Huh? Huh? Okay, I'm the body of Christ. But notice what it says here. It also says in verse 27, it says, now you are the body of Christ. So I'm the body of Christ, okay? And you are the body of Christ. Now turn back to Romans chapter 12. Verse 5, Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Romans chapter 12, verse 5 says, In Christ, we who, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So, I am the body of Christ, you are the body of Christ, and together we are the body of Christ. You get it? All right, so let's, that's, so let's say that. It's a big idea. I am the body of Christ. Say it. I am the body of Christ. Now look, now look around you. And you are the body of Christ. Look around some more. Together, we are the body of Christ. You, you did good. Let's do it all, all in unison once again. I am the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Together, we are the body of Christ. That's it. That's it. So... What is the body of Christ? It's, it's me. It's you. It's us together. What is the body of Christ? I'll tell you. Here's, the, here's what the body of Christ is. It's H.O. and Sherry and Bob and Carol. So when I was a newlywed and ripping my wife apart, and she was praying that I would come to Christ, so in response to those prayers, I said one Sunday morning, why don't we visit a church? And so we went to uh, Asbury United Methodist Church. And on the first day that we were there, we were approached by four friendlies. H.O., Sherry, Bob, and Carol. And, uh, and it was amazing because they were, they were reaching out to us. We were invited over to the home with the four of them, but uh, H.O. and Sherry's home. And I remember sitting on the couch, coffee table, and Sherry sitting on the floor on the other side of the coffee table. And she said, uh, we were talking and she's, you know, trying to get to know us and everything. She says to me, she says, are you a Borneo Christian? Some of you have heard this story before. She said, are you a Borneo Christian? I said, Borneo Christian? What in the world is a Borneo Christian? She said, no, no. I said, born again Christian. And I think that pretty well laid out where I stood. <laughs> but they, they loved on us and they cared about us. They were the body of Christ. So I'll give you another example of the body of Christ. It was Jim. Jim, who allowed me to be part of his, his small group. And he's the one that uh, I've talked about here and I'll talk about for the rest of my life because I love him so much because Jim saw something in me that I never even knew was there. And he spoke words of encouragement. He mentored me. He discipled me. He gave me a vision for what it meant to be a godly man, a godly husband, and a godly father. Jim was the body of Christ. H.O. and Sherry, Bob and Carol were the body of Christ, are the body of Christ. Jim was the body of Christ. 
And then there was Dan and me. They were the body of Christ. Because they had this adult education class. Lyle and Marge were the body of Christ because they had this, this parenting class where they, they invited my... They, I was so honored that, that Lyle and Marge would invite me to be part of their class. It was invitation only. You can only get, the only way you get into it is by invitation. It's kind of like the old, uh, the old uh, you know, deal where you, uh, you have a warehouse full of things, but you tell people they can't have it for 90 days so that they really want it. You know, the fear of loss is a greater incentive than the hope of gain, you know, that whole thing. So that's the way they did it. It was really cool. So anyway, I was very honored to be invited. Very honored to be invited. And so they had this like picnic, this big picnic. Invited us all to come to kind of kick it off. And, and Lyle's barge running around snapping pictures of everybody. And then, and then on the first night, they play the, this, this music, this Cats in the Cradle song. While they're flashing pictures up of my kids and, and myself and my wife and all these other people flashing these pictures up on the screen. So they really had us. But they were, they are the body of Christ. They are the body of Christ. Ken Moore. Ken Moore is the body of Christ. Ken and I had lunch every, every week for 32 years. He is the body. That's what the body of Christ is. It's the body of Christ is, is my family going on vacation. The body of Christ is your family going on a mission trip. The big idea here today is that I'm, I am the body of Christ and you are the body of Christ. And together, together, we, we're the body of Christ. It's us. So, what does this body do? Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And you can see the synthesis between last week, talking about spiritual gifts, if you were here. <clears throat> oh, that's why not, so many of you didn't raise your hands. You weren't here last week. Okay, just one more, one more try. <laughs> one last try, okay. But we're, this is a, you can see the synthesizing, the synthesis of these two ideas, gifts in, in the body of Christ, especially here in this verse. So it was, Christ, who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. <clears throat> and then the verse I really want to focus in on. To prepare God's people for works of service so that what? The body of Christ may be what? Built up. Until it, we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of of Christ, and down there at the end of verse 16, as each part does its work. And so, so the, the, uh, what, the, what this body does is that it's building up the rest of the body to attain this unity of faith and this spiritual maturity. Uh, yeah, all of that. All right, and then, I mean, there's so much more you could talk about there. But, again, the big idea here today is that I, I, hey, let's say this together. Say it together. I am the body of Christ. Look around. Look around. You are the body of Christ. Together, we are the body of Christ. That's how it works. That's how it works. And then, uh, finding your own place in, in the body of Christ. Let's talk a little bit about that. Main thing I want you to understand is just that, that, that it's a mindset. It's just a way of thinking about other people. May, may, mostly, body of Christ is just a, just a, it's a, it's a way, it's a set of lens, lenses th by which we observe other people. So, um, so I have, uh, I'm getting a new roof on our house. Uh, and 
we have a, a roofing crew out there. And uh, there are five guys on the roof. Uh, one of them speaks English. Uh, one of them almost speaks English. And so I noticed this, this guy uh, in, in the backyard yesterday, and he was throwing up. So I don't know what that was about, but I, I, had, I figured it was probably just reaction to too much heat and humidity or something. So, um, so my wife said, oh, <laughs> she wasn't thinking clearly. She said, she said, oh, he just threw up in our backyard. And so she's thinking about somebody throwing up in the backyard, okay? But I'm being the righteous one in the family. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, when I saw him, I, I saw, now I don't know if he's a Christian or not. I'm not saying he was. And I'm not saying that this is the, the correct way to apply the teaching even. But I was just thinking, but I was just thinking, okay, a cold cup of water, you know. So anyway, so I went and I got a cold glass of water and I took it out and I said, would you like some water? And he was so grateful. He was so grateful. Well, that was being the body of Christ. That was doing my part as each one does his part. All right. So it's a mindset. It's just a way of thinking about this. I hope my wife never hears this tape. Uh, I hope, I hope you forget by the next time we do a wife's event here next Valentine's Day. I hope you forget or that at least we'll be brothers. <laughs> My brothers. All right. So this can be this body of Christ. This can be as organized as, as you want it to be. So to be part of a, of a body of Christ. I remember one time my mentor that I mentioned earlier, my disciple Jim. He was an engineer and he always had these great engineering illustrations. You know, if you tear, I, I don't remember it, but you know, if you tear a piece of uh, cigarette paper in half and stack it on top and you do that a hundred times, you know, how will, you know, go up to the moon or something like that. All these illustrations, you know, is very interesting kind of guy. And, but I remember one time somebody was saying to, saying to Jim, that, you know, why don't we just, oh, just let, why don't we just go with the flow and, you know, let the spirit move. And, and uh, Jim said, we could do that. But said, you know, I think the Holy Spirit can work through planning and organization too, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, in fact, I would say that, that most of the time the Holy Spirit does th work through structures and through, uh, through, uh, through, um, uh, systematic ways of thinking about things. And that if you want a big result, uh, develop a system that's reproducible. If you want a small result, don't. Okay? Now, that doesn't make one right or one, one right and one wrong. But the point is, is that there is value in organizing the body of Christ. And so this big knock uh, that some people have against the institutional church is, is really quite unfair. It's really quite unfair. So... I like the saying that the church has many critics, but no rivals. Can you think of one organization that has done more for humanity than the institutional church? When you think about all the great hospitals and the great universities and the coalitions for the homeless and, and the, uh, the, the, the fight against uh, abortion and uh, teenage crisis pregnancy centers and uh, soup kitchens for the, for the whole, on and on and on and on and on. The institutional church, the organized iterations of the body of Christ are powerful and useful. And yeah, we need to reserve the right to critique ourselves to make ourselves better, all right? So th that doesn't mean we shouldn't critique, uh, constructively critique, uh, critique ourselves. But 
the body of Christ in an organized form is very powerful. And so don't shy away from finding your place in organized religion. The hottest video on the internet right now is Jeff Bethke. And it's, I hate religion, comma, but I love Jesus. And I get his point. 22 million hits, by the way. 22 million hits on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. So he's like, uh, he's got like a queue of people outside trying to figure out how to commercialize this really hot young talent. And uh, he was on Huckabee last week. He's just a great, and he's a great guy. But the, and, but the point is, is that don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? Okay, I'm hammering this point because, because there is this feeling that I get from a lot of men that the church doesn't have anything to offer them. It does, and if the church is not, if, if the church is not meeting the need that you have, then get in there and put an oar in the water and do something about it. Use your giftedness. Find your place there. Now, not everybody is going to be called to do that, but more men ought to be. Does this make sense? Yeah, it does. Of course it does. All right. Because I said it. That's <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so that part of the mindset to be organized. But, but, but even, even, uh, even more powerful is the informal organization, uh, the informal iteration of the body of Christ, us together. Uh, the organic as opposed to the organized. It's just a few of us brothers getting together, um, going and catching, uh, going and catching the, uh, the new, newest, best born movie together, or catching lunch with another guy, or meeting our small group here. Uh, many of you guys go to different restaurants around uh, together after this Bible study and have breakfast together. That's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. The big idea is that I am the body of Christ. What is it? What's the big idea today? I am the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Together at breakfast, we are the body of Christ. That's it. That's it. You have it. So there's this amazing story that I told a number of years ago about a true story about a pastor who um, had a member of his congregation, a man who had not been to church for a long, long time. So the pastor went over to the man's house and rapped on the door and he opened the door and peeked through. The pastor asked if he could come in. The man looked a little sheepish. He's embarrassed. He hadn't been there. He'd been out on the fringe. Hadn't been engaged in the body of Christ. A little sheepish. But he went ahead and opened the door and let the pastor in. Didn't say a word. Pastor went over, sat down. The man sat down. Didn't say a word. Pastor noticed that there was a roaring fire in the fireplace. After about a minute or two, he, without saying a word, he got up and he went over to the fireplace and he got the tongs and he took one of the logs out of the fire and he set it on the hearth by itself. And then he sat back down again and he just watched that single log as this roaring fire died down and finally went out and began to smolder and smoke. Little curls of smoke going up in the air. Still, word had not been said. The pastor got up, picked up the tongs, and took that log and put it back into the fireplace with the other logs, and it immediately burst back into flame again. And then the pastor turned to the man and didn't say a word, but the man said, I understand. I'll be in church on Sunday. The big idea today is this. 
Say it with me. I am the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Together, we are the body of Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for uh, this famous teaching that Paul has given us on the body of Christ and uh, these, these messages that we can't say we're not part of it and that we need all the different parts of it and we can't say that anybody is not needed in it. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to have this body of Christ mindset, this 1 Corinthians 12, one body, many parts mindset, uh, by which we look at other people and by which we engage other people, and that you would, you would bring uh, glory to yourself and joy to us as we uh, live out this way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.